There are a couple of reasons we are beginning this segment with those numbers you just saw. First, as of the end of 2022, more than half of the women serving time in Maine's prison system were convicted of a drug crime. Second, for some, it's the only life they've known as adults, so prisons are offering education programs to help them change their lives, including a new one that offers them a chance to learn a trade that's very much in demand these days. Chris Costa is here with that. Hi, Chris. Brian and Amanda, when they get out, those women will have gaps on their resumes and criminal records. Tonight, we're introducing you to the first group of incarcerated women to complete a program that could change their futures. Inside Central Maine Community College, a group of women is building something new. You know, wanted something different. Sarah Denbo is one of eight women working in this brand new welding laboratory at CMCC, exploring an opportunity to forge a new career. Hopefully, I can see this in my future. And they will need all the help they can get. I said it's hard to get a job, you know, and um, people look at you a certain kind of way when you when you have a you know something on your record, you know. A record they cannot erase. At the end of class, they do not go home. It's going to go in the garden. They go back. Um, the one out front at SMRC. Here, these women are incarcerated. Residents at the Southern Maine Women's Reentry Center in Wyndham. Sarah has two years left, but is hoping to get out in about seven months. I wish I'd be able to kind of step out the door right now so I was fresh. We only got about an hour left, so fresh off learning these new skills. They are the first inmates to ever participate and graduate from this new four-week welding certificate program. The person responsible for this connection, Kareen Bailey. She worked in construction for 38 years. Having to fight my way, prove myself over and over and over again. So I, once I landed this job 14 years ago, I was like, gives me an opportunity to give these ladies a boost up. Now she works for the Department of Corrections, linking prison residents with opportunities in life after lockup. A lot of the jobs are typical. Something like this gives them a career. Building skills and sparking confidence. I'd say 95% are have trauma in their past. A lot of women are beaten down over time. So they're not good enough for things. They can't do this or they can't do that. And it really, it harms, it harms people. People like 29-year-old Amber Morin from Lewiston, who's serving a four-year sentence for drug trafficking. I was really lost, you know. Um, I had no self-esteem. I was just broken, broken. And since being here, I've, I've found myself, and I have self-esteem now. And just having that is a big step, you know. A critical base that can keep them from going back behind bars. <laughs> For Sarah and Amber, this is not the first time they've been through the prison system. And when I got out before, I did well for about three years. And then I messed up again, so. I've gotten out and not having any foundation. You're not having a solid plan in place. And it's just like, it's setting yourself up for failure. Doing things like this really builds them up. You know, gives them a purpose and gives them a future to look forward to because they can go from here and the sky's the limit. The next obstacle is the job application, which asks them to reveal if they've ever been convicted of a felony. It's not good. Not good at all. Because you get judged, you know what I mean? It doesn't bother me that I'm a felon. My skill has nothing to do with my criminal history. They want to put that behind them. You know, they've done their time, they pay their dues, and now it's time to move forward, but if they have to check that box every time, it's a reminder of where they were, not where they can go. Even if it's their second or third chance, having a path, a purpose, helps them put together the pieces of a new chapter. Having that confidence to be able to say, hey, I deserve this and I can do it. I'm trying to create a better life for myself and my kids. This right here gives me hope. So at the end of the course, the students receive a certificate of completion. The welding instructor at CMCC wanted to clarify that that is different from a welder certificate, but it still puts these women on a path to jobs in a very high-paying trade. 
And that is huge. Yeah, thank you, Chris.